Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Commissar Bro here with Nepal. Why Nepal, you ask? Oh, I don't know. Because it's poor and broken and crappy. So why not? That seems that seems to be a uh, you know the usual prerequisite for the countries I pick. Keep in mind, I do plan on doing a UK uh, little walkthrough, or at least how I play as the UK. Um, I do want to let you know the reason I didn't pick the UK this time is because the UK is not very hard to play as um, compared to such other creatures as Nepal. That's right, Nepal is broke. Yes, they're so broke. Don't we just love this? We're just gonna be so excited. Yes, indeed. Indubitably. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, get straight to it then. Oh, and I want to remind everyone: do not forget to share your likes, your subs, and if you have a comment or a question on how I play these videos, feel free to ask. I will answer to the best of my ability. I do not have knowledge of modding this game. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. I have no way to explain that. But I do plan on doing videos with mods in it eventually. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I just really haven't had much shit down time lately. So without further ado, let us get started, shall we? We're going to start as I usually start by raising the taxes to exorbitant rates. That's right. The people of Nepal will hate the Commissar, but will learn to love him. Because he is here for you. He is here to make you feel beautiful. We're gonna go like put down. Eh, I'll keep education a little bit, but we are gonna get rid of healthcare. We are going to increase infrastructure. Get rid of research. We don't need that. Uh, tourism. We basically don't need that. Um, you know what? I'll go ahead and bring education down. It's really high. Let's go ahead and set in those changes. But we're still ludicrously broke. So let's go ahead and speed it up. Let's let taxes kick in. It's very possible that hasn't kicked in yet. Yes, the population's turning on me. I'm the commissar! The population always turns on me. Until about ten years later, in which case they realize the folly of their ways. And they learn to love me. As if I were family. But let's look. Uh, thematic maps. Diplomatic relations. As you can see, no one cares for poor little Nepal. So let's look at what we're allowed to do in Nepal. Mm. Yes, we are going to permit that. Go ahead and yes, allow that to happen. Um, child labor will be unpermitted to increase our diplomatic relations. Also, that is something else I'm going to do a video about as well, guys. So don't worry, it will happen. I'm going to do a video about uh, how diplomatic relations works and the sense of what is the best way to run your petty empire diplomatically speaking like how to get people on your side one thing that I should let you know compared to the original version of superpower 2 it was actually really really easy to get everyone to love you and pretty much all you had to do was um, you know flip up the foreign aid switch and let time roll by and people would eventually just start to love you as if you were their best friend from down the street for many years. So, you know, but in this, uh, this multi-mod edition, basically, because this one adds a bunch of features, the Steam edition anyway, adds a bunch of features that were in uh, multi the multi-mod mod, which I was quite frequent of. I liked the multi-mod a lot. Um... And that is normally what I used to play with. And the multi-mod naval mod, I think it was called? I don't remember. Anyway, I used to play with those, and they made my experience with Superpower uh, much better overall. Um, and they fix a lot of the problems that the game, the original game has. Even though in its purest form, I still really enjoyed the original game. But it was incredibly buggy, and if you think this version's buggy... You don't even know, because the original version was really, really ungodly buggy. And, I mean, it was just, it was a shame. It was a shame, because it had a lot of potential to be an amazing game, but it just wasn't, because, I don't know, maybe there just wasn't enough budget 
going into the game, which is a frequent problem uh, to these tiny developers, these indie developers like Golem Labs. Golem Labs was the guys who actually initially created this game. I know it's been taken over by Nordic Games, because so, um, I think I think I don't know how. I don't. Well, you know what? I really don't care to look too much into it. But basically, as I said, Golem Labs, uh, I guess, went out of business or whatever, and Nordic Games bought it. That is why it is now owned by Nor uh, Nordic Games. So yeah, there's a little history lesson for you. Anyway, let's focus on the beauty of what's going on right now. As you can see, my inflation is lowering. That's not exactly a good thing. Because if it keeps lowering from where it is, um, it kind of shrinks my economy. My economy is really weak right now because Nepal doesn't have much resources. But the resources, as you can see, is slowly rising. And it's only been eight months since we started playing. As you can tell, I've been fiddling around a little bit here and there with the budget bar just to make sure that we are slowly making a little bit more money. But even then, that does not seem to be the perfect solution for what is going on because inflation is lowering. We need people to spend money. But we can't lower the tax rate, unfortunately, because we are just too broke. And it's not going to happen. So, Commissar, what can we do in situations such as this? Well, easily. We can go, we can disband a few cells here and there. That'll free up tiny, tiny little bits of money. And, I mean, really, who is going to be attacking the poll with spies and all sorts of crap like that? Nobody. Nobody. So, uh, that didn't really help too much, did it? Nope, 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 nope. Because, again, our, our inflation, we need to get it up a little bit. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, well, look, it's slowly starting to grow. A little bit, little baby steps that will grow. This is the good stuff here. Let's make sure that we're not taxing the bejesus. Oh, God, we are. Okay, well, see, this is a problem. Um, I never like my sector tax to be above 5%, roughly. Um, 8.5 is fine. Because it, in it, it inhibits the growth of that particular resource. At the same time, though, you might lose money, so you have to be careful. Like, I might actually start losing money after lowering that one as much as I did. But I want my economy to grow exorbitantly. So, really, I'm going to lower all these taxes to incredibly... Oh, okay, well, the dairy's not bad. 8.8. .8. Eh, tobacco's not bad. And fuck it! Let's legalize drugs and see what happens, shall we? There we go. We're gonna be Nepal! The only country in the world where drugs are legal. That's right. Oh, shit. Well, that didn't help my economy. Again, we lowered those uh, sector taxes, so that's gonna hurt our economy for now. But in the long run, it's gonna help it grow. So trust me, I know what I'm doing on that one. Uh, the taxes there are pretty low. We'll keep those where they are. We're going to lower this a bit more. I want that growth, ladies and gentlemen. I want it. But you, you can see it's it's not exactly hard to play as Nepal. You just uh, It takes probably a little bit more micromanagement because you don't have much money at all. Um, but what we can do is we can sign up with people such as Belgium who will keep giving us uh, economic aid treaties. And let's even go ahead and try to throw in a common market and see what happens. Let's see um, if they're filling up our resources, if that'll help us out any. Oh, yeah, that helped us out significantly. See, that was a great move. And, again, common markets are a really good idea for both parties. Um, just because they help fill up those resources at almost, to me, it seems like a budget, like a, like a cheaper price. Which, obviously, is, is, is a smart move. Oh, and look, we're making 500, basically, roughly. 500 million in foreign aid. This is good for us. So we're off to a great start. Uh, let's uh, let's raise education just a little bit. Let's raise environment. Why are you raising environment, Commissar? Well, I'm raising environment because environment actually gives you a bonus to resources. Um, which, basically, if you're ever curious about what something does, you have the handy F1 button that you can press, like on these budgets and stuff like that. It tells you what they do. Uh, as you can see, this increases the government approval rating, but it lowers overall uh, diplomatic relations. Environment increases the production of resources of the primary sector and pleases the population. Also, you won't have crap like tornadoes and stuff like that as often. Uh, death rate pleases the population. Uh, services category boost, blah, 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 blah. I mean, everything has its little bit. To the government, government is the most important for a multi-party democracy just because if you don't raise it, corruption grows out of control. 
Uh, not to mention, if you're not happy, or if the people aren't happy with you, they'll boot your ass out of office. So we're going to raise that just a little bit. As you can see, we're starting to lose money now. But that's okay. We'll get rid of tourism. Nobody's touristing here. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to take back some of that boost I gave to the environment. Yeah, I'm going to take just a little bit of it. I'm really considering just going straight to the straight injecting money into the resource sector. That's what I tend to do a lot. Uh, but see, it's risky. It's really risky, especially right now with our economy on... Oh, well, damn, we just got a huge boost to our economy. <laughs> oh, random injections of money. You will never hear me complain. Anyway. <laughs> well, since we got that huge boost, why not go ahead and raise environment back up a little bit? But what we're going to do now... Ugh, damn it, we lost the boost again. Uh, must be something going on with our resources. We're probably gaining and losing. But the important thing to focus on here is our inflation has stagnated to 1.3%. It has not gone any lower. Um, our population in continues to increase exponentially at 3.5%, which with these early, you know, nations, these weaker nations, isn't really a bad thing, in my opinion. The more people, the more workforce, as far as I'm concerned. And also, you don't want a lot of old people in your country, um, just overall, unfortunately, because they don't work. And that uh, doesn't assist your uh, economy, basically. So it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, but we still have our resources, which, by the way, if you haven't figured out yet, what I'm primarily trying to do is pay off my debt. Um, and hopefully I can keep raising government spending a little bit to help combat corruption. Because corruption in Nepal is terrible! And what can we do about that? Not much, not much. It is the truth. But we can see if we can't find a country, ooh, like Canada, who will send us an economic aid treaty. Thank you, Canada. And I wonder, I don't think it will, but let's see if a common market will assist us at all. Probably not. And again, I'm doing this the hard way. There's really much easier ways to do what I'm doing. For example, let me just go ahead and see if I can't get the world to fucking love me. Which they probably will after these next couple of moves. I'm up to 66. Uh, I could jump it up a bit more. Do I want to? Yeah, nah. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Let me go ahead and go back to my resources, my laws and whatnot. And see what I've got permitted and not permitted. Alright, the usual. Not permitted, permitted. And I think I might get rid of... Let's see what year it is. I'm going to make sure I'm not about to get voted out of office. Okay, good. Alright, so I'm going to just make Hinduism illegal rather than official. And see if that improves relations with anybody. Not really. Not really. No big deal. Hmm. Let's see. What is the United States at? 59? Canada's at 57? Ask for another economic aid treaty from them. Yes, yes, yes. See, as you can see by what I'm doing, is really none of, none of the, the the tricks I use, I, I guess, if you even want to call them that, are, you know, they're nothing special. This is nothing that nobody else can't do or can't attempt to do. As you can see, I'm getting a whole bunch of economic aid treaties from all over the world, um, which you can only have nine of these, so I don't know why I'm joining all these. But let's see if it assists us. It does. It does. We get a huge boost uh, to our economy, and it's helping us pay it off. This is really the best way to play these smaller countries. Just get the world to do everything for you, because they will. Because they're, I don't know, I don't know why, why anybody would want to pay for Nepal to do anything. As you can see, half, almost a third to a half of my economy is being paid by other countries. Three in January of 2003. Well, there we have it. As you can see, uh, let's see, what is it? Five months later, and our economy is booming. It's doing great. And yeah, look, I'm taking off some of the taxes because I want the approval rating to go up. At this point in time, what we need to focus on would just be, um, you know, like I said, corruption and getting some of these bars up a little bit to help increase our economy further and I mean this is it this is really how this is how you would want to play Nepal if you were just trying to fix the country 
again, this is if you're not playing with real people. Well, even then, if you play with real people and there's an understanding that they're not going to destroy you or attack you, then this is a great way to play uh, every time. And with most countries, this is how it works. I'm really not doing anything special. Um, but I hope this helps. I really do. I hope this helps everybody uh, uh, with the game. Because I know that this game can be overwhelming uh, from time to time. And sometimes it seems like it's not out there to give you a break. And that can be true. Be, I don't know. I don't know. But once you get the hang of it, it's an actually really fun experience that you're going to enjoy. Like I said, um, we could have gone a separate route and just like jumped up diplomatic relations largely with like the United States or Canada or somebody like that and good lord Canada is booming right now ooh the Ameri the United States is too everybody's actually doing really well okay never mind not everybody UK is not <laughs> poor Brits poor Brits they need backup they need economic backup but anyway I have ranted on for long enough if you have any further questions feel free to message me contact me in any way preferably through comments because I do read all of the comments I do miss a couple from now, uh, now and now and again. But if I don't reply back to you within like five five days, a week, really, post the question again, and I'll feel free. To, uh, I'll notice it the second time, hopefully. Anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys because you take the time out of your days to listen to me rant and prattle on about video games, and I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thanks, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this um, how-to with Nepal. See you later, comrades. Gentlemen, boys and girls, it's me, Commissar Bro, here for uh, another epic run at Superpower 2. Except this time, instead of playing an already dominant Chinese power, I instead decided to choose one of the most unlikeliest of all countries to choose. That's right. I picked Djibouti, and as such, I shall bring the might of Djibouti to cross Africa, and eventually to the world. The only problem is, this economy is so bad.